The Ryzen 7 9700X launched with terrible reviews. Were they right or could it actually become the new king of gaming? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the UPC FC series, we've been helping you make the right choice by pitting two components against each other in the PC Octagon to see who wins. In this video, our focus will be on two top AMD gaming CPUs with the newly released Ryzen 7 9700X in the blue corner, taking on the Ryzen 7 7800X3D in the red corner, the current king of gaming chips. In addition to showing you benchmarks across 18 games, I will also demystify the slew of negative launch day reviews and explain what went wrong. And if you stick around, I will share with you my pro tips for how to unleash the performance locked inside the new 9000 series chips, something you will definitely not want to miss. It's really not rocket science, so before the main event gets started, let's jump straight into demystifying the AMD Ryzen 9000 series CPU launch. Saying that the launch of the new AMD Ryzen 9000 series chips did not go well is a massive understatement. If you looked at most of the day one reviews, you would walk away thinking this chip was simply not worth buying. Virtually all of the larger well-known tech YouTubers were aligned. The 9700X was a huge disappointment in gaming. What's fascinating to me is that they all provided a very negative review except one channel. To their credit, the LTT team provided one of the only positive 9700X reviews that I saw. And given all of the drama that they went through over the last year, I think we should give them kudos for doing a good job testing this CPU. So what went wrong and are all of the negative reviews valid? Yes and no. Most reviewers simply installed the chip, installed a kit of DDR5 6000 RAM, enabled Expo in BIOS, and ran their benchmarks. Without any additional guidance from these reviewers, the vast majority of users will adopt a similar approach. So while the data generated does accurately reflect out-of-the-box performance, it doesn't tell the full story. This is especially true for a chip like the 9700X that was configured very poorly at the factory by AMD. Now this is not the fault of the reviewers, but rather the fault of AMD. Knowing that most reviewers are lazy, they really should have worked with motherboard manufacturers to offer multiple performance profiles for the 9000 series chips. For the 7800X3D, a chip that is already configured to extract max performance out of the box, this approach is fine, but for non-X3D chips, it's not. The fundamental issue is that most reviewers didn't even try to understand the true potential of the 9700X in gaming, because they were more focused on trying to get their review published before their competitors. Exploring and testing the potential of a chip takes time, and would likely mean a delay in getting their review up, which means lost clicks, lost views, and lost revenue you, something they are definitely not willing to give up. Most day one reviews are flawed for this very reason, and as a result, it's generally not in the best interest of viewers to use them to guide purchasing decisions. AMD can just keep this thing. I have no interest in the 9700X at this point in time. There is also another large issue that is important to address. The way many tech YouTubers test CPUs in games is simply wrong. The only way to test a CPU or RAM properly in games is to ensure that you heavily load the CPU. That typically means testing at low graphical presets in addition to testing at a resolution of 1080p. In order to heavily load the CPU, this first part is critical, but unfortunately it's often overlooked. For example, Hardware Unbox tests their games at ultra settings, regardless of whether it's a CPU or GPU, which results in a very small performance gap between the 9700X and 7700X. Now compare this to Gamers Nexus that tested the same game at medium settings. As a result, there is a much larger performance gap for the 9700X over the 7700X because the CPU was more heavily loaded. I genuinely don't understand why Hardware Unbox insists on using ultra settings when testing CPUs. It simply doesn't make sense. Shortly after the initial wave of negative reviews, AMD responded with a blog post. In this post, they addressed the lack of gaming performance with two relevant updates. The first was to address why AMD generated gaming data differed from reviewer data. This consisted of several factors, including testing different games, using DDR5 6000 for Intel PCs, testing with VBS on in Windows, and using a later version of a branch prediction optimization algorithm not found in current versions of Windows. The second, and perhaps more interesting update, was to explain how users could extract max performance from the chips. This focused on using the optimized AMD specific branch prediction algorithm available in the preview version of Windows 11 24H2. They even provided a table showing a sample of what to expect for a 9950X. Below this table they stated that this will improve the performance for Zen 4 and Zen 3 in addition to Zen 5 and that they are working with Microsoft to roll it out as soon as possible. So while it's helpful to put this out, it does seem like another blunder from AMD that they didn't work with Microsoft before the launch to ensure that this was available from day one. So is Microsoft going to save the day? After the blog post 
first by AMD, Hardware Canucks released a great video called Unrealistic Expectations, Windows Updates on Ryzen 9000, where they explored the performance claims made by AMD in greater detail. What they found is fascinating and something that was completely missed by other large tech YouTubers. They discovered that most of the performance boost for 9000 series chips with Windows 11 24H2 was not due to the optimized branch prediction algorithm, but in fact due to memory integrity being turned off by default. In all other versions of Windows 11, memory integrity is turned on by default. So if you compare the gaming performance between 23H2 with memory integrity turned on and 24H2 with memory integrity turned off, you will see a large performance difference in all CPUs, not just for AMD. So if you turn memory integrity on and compare 23H2 with 24H2, you will isolate the benefit of the new optimized branch prediction algorithm. A 3% uplift in performance is great, but it's nothing close to the 10% that was originally claimed. The good news for AMD CPU owners is that you can now download these improvements with an optional update for Windows 11 version 23H2. So there's no longer a need to download the preview version of 24H2. So what should you do? The first thing you should do if you're running Windows 11 is download the latest update for 23H2 that includes the optimized branch prediction algorithm. This will provide a small boost in performance for all AMD Ryzen chips. However, if you want to learn how to unleash the performance locked inside the 9700X, stick around until after the main event. As mentioned earlier, the battle today is between two top AMD gaming CPUs, with the newly released Ryzen 7 9700X in the blue corner, taking on the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D in the red corner, the current king of gaming chips. The test system being used to run the benchmarks is my AMD AM5 based open bench table with the following components. For the motherboard, we have a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. For the first RAM kit, we have G-Skill Trident Z5neo RGB 32GB at DDR5 6000 at CL30. And for the second kit, it's DDR5 6400 at CL32. For the GPU, we have an ASUS ROG Strix GeForce RTX 4090 OC Edition. For the CPU cooler, we have an EVGA CLCX 360mm AIO. For storage, we have a 2TB SK Hynix Platinum P41 NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, we have a Gigabyte GP AP 1200PM 1200W Platinum Power Supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All testing was performed with the RTX 4090 at default clocks, and each CPU undervolted with a curve offset of negative 30 on all cores. I could have tried pushing each chip further, however this is an undervolt that I've found to be stable on all 7000 and 9000 series CPUs that I've tested. The RAM for each CPU was set to Expo, however, to remove bias from the benchmarks it's important to test both CPUs at their optimum memory conditions. For the 7800X 3D CPU and all X3D variants, the extra L3 cache reduces the impact of memory speed on performance because the CPU doesn't need to access the RAM as frequently. To prove this, I tested the 7800X 3D in five popular games with a kit of 6000 mega transfer per second and 6400 mega transfer per second Expo memory. As you can see from the results, the performance difference was negligible. For the 9700X, however, performance does improve with higher speed memory, something virtually all reviewers overlooked. So as a result, I decided to test it with a higher speed kit of 6400 Expo RAM, which is the highest memory speed that AMD AM5 chips can run while still maintaining a unified memory controller clock frequency equal to the memory clock frequency. In order to thoroughly test the CPUs, I ran the benchmarks at different game settings in addition to different resolutions. To place maximum load on each CPU, I tested at 1080p with low settings, which should allow me to extract max performance from each chip. To create a more balanced CPU GPU load, I tested at 1440p with medium settings. And to see if each CPU had an impact on GPU performance, I tested at 4K with ultra settings. These resolution setting combinations align well with typical gamer selections, with 1440p medium settings reflecting what most online first person shooter gamers would likely use to achieve maximum frame rates, whereas 4K ultra settings reflect what most single player gamers would do with a high end CPU GPU combination to extract maximum quality. I also added a new game to the benchmark suite, Black Myth Wukong, which has been well received and has a fantastic built-in benchmark. One thing I really appreciate is that the game developers let you download the benchmark without buying the game, something I wish all game developers would do. With the CPUs ready to go, let's check the benchmarks. But before we do, I think it's only appropriate to introduce this the right way. Over to you, Bruce. And now, it's time! Introducing the components fighting for Blackbird PC Tech Benchmark Supremacy. In the blue corner, we have the Champion. In the red corner, we have the Challenger. Who will win this battle royale? 
Stay tuned to find out! As you can see from the benchmarks, the 9700X is an amazing gaming chip that is able to rival the performance of the 7800X 3D. So the question that I'm sure many of you are asking is, how do you unlock this performance? There are a few important BIOS tweaks that you need to make in order to unlock the true potential of the 9700X. The first, as already mentioned earlier, is to use a higher speed kit of 6400 RAM with Expo enabled. The 6400 mega transfer per second G-Skill kit that I purchased was rated at CL32. However, I was able to dial in tighter memory timings to match the 6000 CL30 kit and still maintain stability. To check if your memory is stable, I highly recommend downloading a tool called Kahoo RAM Test and running it for about 30 minutes. If you don't get any errors, then your system should be stable. I'll place a download link in the video description below. The second is to enable an all-core undervolt using the Curve Optimizer option in BIOS. I explained how to do this in detail in my recent all AMD upgrade video, but most of these tweaks can be found under AMD overclocking and then precision boost overdrive. The third tweak is to expand the default power limit, which sets the TDP to 65 watts. You can accomplish this multiple ways, but an easy way to do this on the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master is to change the PBO limits option to motherboard, which significantly increases the power limits. The only issue with doing this is that your CPU package temps will now go above 90 degrees Celsius if you run a benchmark like Cinebench. So in order to keep your temps in check, I recommend adding a platform thermal throttle limit of say around 80 degrees Celsius. This will reduce your performance, but it will help keep the temps of the 9700X similar to the 7800X 3D and in doing so prevent excessive and potentially damaging boost behavior. The fourth important tweak that you should make to help the 9700X take advantage of its new higher power limit is to provide an increase to the max CPU boost clock. For my 9700X, I selected a max CPU boost clock override of plus 100, which will allow the chip to boost to 5.6 gigahertz instead of the default 5.5 gigahertz. I did test higher and lower options, but this seemed to be the sweet spot for this chip in terms of performance uplift. The fifth and final tweak that I made was to increase the infinity fabric frequency. I was able to run 2133 MHz stable, which is an increase of approximately 133 MHz over stock settings. Based on my limited testing, I've found that the newer 9000 series chips appear to be much more capable of running higher infinity fabric frequencies versus their 7000 series cousins, which if true is a very positive step forward for AMD. In addition to these primary tweaks, if you truly want to extract max performance in games, then you should also consider tweaking your memory sub timings. You can
can watch someone like Buildzoid on actually hardcore overclocking to learn how to do this manually, but most motherboards now come with automatic memory overclocking options that usually do a decent job. For the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master that I'm using, there is an option called XMP Expo High Bandwidth Support that when enabled tightens the memory subtimings beyond XMP Expo. This isn't necessary and will not have a big impact on your gaming performance, but typically it's a simple switch in BIOS that is definitely worth testing. Again, I highly recommend running Kahoo to check the stability of your RAM after making any memory related changes. I would also recommend running a CPU intensive benchmark like Cinebench to test the stability of your system after making these tweaks. So in summary, the BIOS tweaks that I recommend making to extract max performance from your 9700X in games are 1. Install a high speed memory kit with Expo turned on. 2. Undervolt your CPU using a negative all-core curve offset. 3. Increase the CPU power limits and set a thermal limit. 4. Increase the max CPU boost clock. 5. Increase the infinity fabric frequency. And 6. Tighten your memory subtimings. To show the impact of these tweaks on performance, I tested 5 popular titles with a 7800X 3D, a stock 9700X, and a fully unlocked optimized 9700X. As you can see, the results are quite impressive with significant performance increases over stock settings. In fact, I could have pushed this chip even further, but I wanted to show performance at a level that I believe most users will be able to achieve without needing to get lucky with Silicon Lottery. What's fascinating to me is that there is so much unlocked potential in the 9700X that I believe AMD made an error when they configured it at the factory. As I mentioned earlier, what I think AMD should have done is work with motherboard manufacturers prior to launch to provide two performance profiles. One could be a baseline profile and the other could be a gaming profile that offers much higher performance. The problem for AMD is that the day one benchmarks for the 9700X at stock conditions simply didn't paint a good picture of the performance potential for this chip, with many prospective buyers being turned away. Hopefully this will help set the record straight. In this video we pitted two top AMD gaming CPUs against each other in the PC Octagon to see who will emerge victorious, with the newly released Ryzen 7 9700X in the blue corner taking on the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D in the red corner. Somewhat unexpectedly, the round by round results show a draw, with 5 victories, 5 losses and 8 draws across 18 hard fought rounds. The performance was so close in many games that it was often difficult to select a winner, which is a remarkable achievement for the 9700X given how well the 7800X 3D performs. Furthermore, the extra boost clock frequency for the 9700X helps it perform better than the 7800X 3D in professional workloads such as Blender, which in turn helps position it as a better all-round option. When you take a look at power efficiency however, the 7800X 3D shows just how efficient it is, even when compared with a stock 9700X. With additional tweaking, you could optimize performance per watt for the 9700X to match the 7800X 3D, but this will obviously negatively impact gaming performance, so it's not something I would recommend. Given that gaming performance is so close, what happens when we look at cost? When you add the cost of the CPU and RAM together, the 7800X 3D DDR5 6000 combo is around $50 more expensive, or approximately 10% more than the 9700X DDR5 6400 combo at the time of filming this video. If you now convert that into gaming value or FPS per dollar at 1080p, then the 9700X provides a knockout blow by offering around 10% more value than the 7800X 3D. This is truly an amazing result and not one that many would have expected based on day one reviews, but it helps to show the potential locked inside the 9700X. It's fantastic to see this level of price to performance continue for AMD, and it definitely sets expectations high for the upcoming 9800X 3D. With that said, if you already own a 7800X 3D, then you should feel happy about your purchase, since the performance of this chip is still class leading. If however you are building a new gaming PC, I would now recommend buying a 9700X. It matches the gaming performance of the 7800X 3D in most games, while offering superior performance in professional workloads, all at a much lower price. It offers truly exceptional value, which is something many reviewers still fail to understand. I'm happy to set the record straight and crown it as the new king of gaming. The king is dead. Long live the king. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship Battle Series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes as other components battle it out in the PC Octagon. And if you would like to support the channel further, please also consider joining our new membership program, which I'm super excited about. Bye for now.